What's up, party people? What's happening? Hey, uh, in this video, I want to talk about something you guys ask me a lot. The whole MD versus DO and uh, which school to go to and where and all that good stuff. So I'm going to talk about that first. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. Oh, that's good coffee. Second, I got a question for you. Do, can you see too much nipple in this shirt? Can you, can you see that? Is that too much nipple? I don't, I, uh, I it's a thin shirt. And I put it on, looked good, and then I was like looking in the mirror on the way out, and I was like, I can see my nipple in that. Is that bad? Is that like embarrassing that the nipples are showing? Anyway, let me know what you guys think about that one. Here's the deal. If you didn't know this already, you first try to get into a US medical school, allopathic MD school. There is really nobody, I don't think, that will try to get to a DO school first. Unless there are some six-year programs out there. You go straight from high school into the six-year program. You go BA or BS and then DO at the same time. And that will save you a lot of time if you want to do that. A lot of people don't know what they want to do in high school. And so, you know, you're probably not going to do that. You go into college first and you kind of decide and blah, blah, blah. But if you know very, very early, there are some schools out there and there are also some uh, allopathic MD schools that you can apply to out of high school. It's a six year program and you finish med school. 24 years old, you go into residency at 24 and then you finish like 27 if you're in medicine, 29-ish if you're you know, doing surgery, uh, general surgery is five years. So uh, that's a pretty good deal. So you have that and then of course, you try to get into an allopathic medical school, which is which means MD. And here's, okay, so here's where it splits. If you do not get into an MD school, the question is, uh, in the United States, the question is, do you go to a DO school or do you go to a Caribbean school? And here's my breakdown of this. If you apply, so first of all, you apply to MD schools. If you do not get any invitations for interviews whatsoever then don't bother around with going to like a master getting a master's and trying to improve your grades that you f up and taking the MCAT again and all that stuff then you choose either DO or M MD if you apply to MD schools in the United States and you get some interviews but you don't get a spot or especially even if you get like on the wait list or something you don't get in, then I would take the time to either take the MCAT over or improve your grades, do like, or do a master's. That is the only time I think it's worth doing that. Now, there are some people that I know that took a lot of time and went back and got a master's and it took them like four years to get the master's, to improve their grades, to take the, retake the MCAT and all that stuff and then they did get into a MD school in the United States. So it's not impossible, but it chews up a load of time. And that's why I think it's better, in my opinion, instead of wasting that time, go ahead and go to a Caribbean school because there's no guarantee that if you spend four years to re, you know, improving your application that you're gonna get in. That's, that's the catch. Now, there, there's people that have done it and they were dead set on going to an allopathic school, and so they took the risk, but in my opinion, that's a big risk. That's a four years uh, kind of down the drain. Then, if you do not get any interviews whatsoever, your choices are MD in the Caribbean or Europe, right? A lot of people talk about Europe, and also DO school. So. Here is my take on DO versus Caribbean. I have a lot of friends that are DO physicians. They're surgeons, they're trauma surgeons, they're orth orthopedic surgeons, they're vascular surgeons. Essentially, you can almost do anything, I think, with a DO um, if you go to a DO medical school. It used to be that your options were limited for residencies. I think that is opening up, becoming easier for DO med students to get residencies in kind of like allopathic residencies they're not really allopathic residencies but a lot of times there are some residencies that do not accept DOs that is opening up so that's pretty good the issue that I see with DOs not the training not the school it's that the public doesn't know what a DO is not 
Not everybody. Now there's a lot of people and it's a lot better than 20 years ago, that's for sure. 20 years ago, like people had no idea what a DO was. They thought it was a chiropractor, essentially, right? Um, and so you would have to explain that to every patient. So that is cumbersome. And over a career explaining to every single patient what your degree is and what, and it's okay that you are a doctor is fucking a pain in the ass. That's what I see as the biggest obstacle. It seems really stupid, but that is the reality. My brother-in-law is a DO and he does the same stuff. He has like better training than me, better experience than me because of the jobs that he got. But people still, every once in a while, they're not sure what a DO is. That's the fuck reality it doesn't matter like why you chose it or whatever it just matters that you're gonna be annoyed to explain to people what a do is over and over and over that is why i say in my opinion it's probably better to go to a caribbean school and get an md and after a while nobody's gonna know the difference and they you know don't real they don't realize that there was any issue because normally there's an issue with the reason you go to a DO school or a, a Caribbean school right and there shouldn't be any issue after a while because you will go into a residency right if you get a good residency then that will that should completely make up for you know your school you know the thing about medical schools or, or any school is that you do get very similar training and education in many schools, not all schools, but many schools. One of the biggest differences is about going to a, an Ivy League school is that, and I've talked about this before, is that you have uh, different doors that open for you for the rest of your life. If you tell somebody you went to Harvard, they're going to be more impressed than if you tell them you went to you know, state school, state college. That's it. Doesn't matter. Going to a Caribbean school does hurt you. People do look down on that for sure. And I still get shit from some of my colleagues every once in a while. But I did a pretty good residency. And so my doctoring speaks for itself. I think in the end, it was the right decision for me. Now, I will say that if you go to the wrong Caribbean school, you are going to put yourself in a huge disadvantage and you will have a huge chance of not getting a residency whatsoever which is why i advocate for going to one of the top three or four caribbean schools because program directors in the united states already know those schools and they trust those schools and they trust that those schools are producing uh, really good students and so they are okay accepting students from those schools what about europe europe is a problem because it's very different in their system. And if you come to the U.S. and you're like, "Oh, I tr I I did my uh, all my medical school in Europe. Here I am. I want a residency in the U.S." The res the program directors are like, "Uh, it's a completely different f program. When you get over here, you're going to be completely lost. Not that it's different, you know, physiology and anatomy, but the way that the training is and the in the and the rest of Europe is, is just so different and so students are often have some time they need to take some time to get acquainted to the US system and you know in a busy residency where as a program director you're hiring residents but you're also hiring employees that need to do a job you don't want to hire employees that don't know your system that's why I think going to Europe is a, a disadvantage because these residency program directors know that and they know that about you and you're gonna be at the bottom you're gonna be less you're gonna even be lower on their list than Caribbean students if you even get on the list at all I actually had a friend who went to Budapest I think for his med school and he did that because he wanted to go into a six-year program so he went there and then he realized that he wasn't gonna be able to get a US residency at all and he transferred into a Caribbean school after like four years or five years or something like that finished at the Caribbean school and uh, then he got a residency and now he's like a trauma surgeon and um, I think he's like the ICU director of a pro per fairly big program so it is possible I say this a million times and people keep asking me but it's very important to crush the USMLEs if you're going 
especially step one, if you're gonna go to a Caribbean school, because that's almost your only chance at getting a good residency. There are other ways to get residencies than just getting matched, that's for sure. And I think I talked about that in other videos. That is your sh surest chance of getting a residency from a Caribbean school. Anyway, I think that's about it. That's enough babbling for the day. You gotta love that. All right, you guys, hey, thanks for watching these videos. Comment, share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.